Getting up and running with your TIG stepper motor controller from Pololu is easy. This video will guide you through the basic steps to connect your TIG to its software and control a stepper motor from your computer. The first thing you should do once you receive your TIG is head on over to pololu.com and navigate to the product page for your TIG. In this video, we're using the assembled version of the TIG T825. On the product page, locate the resources. Then, open the user's guide in a new tab. Once you have the user's guide open, we recommend you familiarize yourself with its contents. It's especially important to read the overview, installation instructions for your operating system, the LED feedback section, and the first three sections for setting up your controller. Note that with any of the user's guides on pololu.com, you can view the document as a printable PDF. You can also view the document on a single page. This is especially useful if you'd like to search the document for specific words. Once you've looked over the user's guide a bit, head to the Getting Started subsection that contains the installation instructions for your operating system and follow the steps listed there to download and install the TIC Control Center software. Once you've installed the software, open it on your computer. It's good practice to check things are working in small chunks rather than doing your first checks after you've spent hours making a really complicated system. With the TICs, and probably most USB products, it's especially easy to do some basic checks before wiring or soldering anything up just by plugging it into USB and confirming everything's working. You should start by running the Control Center software and connecting the TIC to your computer. When you plug in your TIC, the software might automatically connect to it, but if it doesn't, you should be able to select your TIC from the Connected To drop-down box. Once the software is connected, the green LED should be flickering, indicating there is USB activity, and the red and yellow LEDs should be solid and blinking respectively, indicating that there is no power supply to V in, which is what we expect since we haven't connected power for our motor yet. If your LEDs are doing something different, refer to the LED feedback section of the user's guide. If you can't connect to the tick, revisit the installation section of the user's guide. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully and refer to the troubleshooting information to get the tick to connect. Now that you've confirmed the tick is working, you can set up your controller with your stepper motor and power supply. If you haven't already selected a power supply and stepper motor for your project, you should refer to section 4.1 of the user's guide. For this video, we're using a 3 amp adjustable power supply set to 12 volts and a NEMA 17 size stepper motor. This stepper motor and many others are available on our website and can be found by searching for stepper motors and selecting the category at the top of the search results. Note that the NEMA designation is based solely on size, not electrical characteristics. Any stepper motor with a 1.7 inch square face is considered NEMA 17. Other characteristics about the motor, such as holding torque, voltage and current ratings, and height, vary within the NEMA 17 designation. Section 4.2 of the user's guide discusses how to connect your stepper motor and power supply to your TIC. For our four wire bipolar stepper motor, we need to connect one coil to the A outputs on the TIC and the other coil to the B outputs. By referring to the product page for our stepper motor, we know that the black and green wires are one coil and the blue and red wires are another coil. So we will connect the black wire to A1, the green wire to A2, the blue wire to B2, and the red wire to B1. Note that if you happen to flip which way the wires are connected for any coil, for example swapping red and blue, the motor will turn in the opposite direction. And if you happen to pair up wires from different coils, the motor either won't go or should be noticeably erratic. If you power up your tick and realize you wired your stepper motor incorrectly, your tick will probably be fine. But before fixing your connections, be sure to disconnect your input and USB power. Failing to turn off power while changing connections is a gamble that can lead to your electronics breaking. Next, connect your power supply to the ground and VIN pins on the high current side of the board. Now you can connect the TIC to your computer. Before starting our stepper motor, we need to set the current limit. 
This is what enables us to use a 12 volt supply with a 2.8 volt stepper motor. As long as we set the current limit to the stepper motor's rated current, we can use a 12 volt input. From the stepper motor's product page, we know our motor's rated current is about 1.7 amps. The TIC T825 can provide up to 1.5 amps without additional cooling, and since we don't have a heat sink on our TIC or a fan in our setup, we'll set our current limit to 1.5 amps. In the TIC control center, select the input and motor settings tab. The current limit setting can be found in the motor box and is expressed in milliamps. Enter your current limit. Note that even though 1500 was entered, the current limit setting is 1472 milliamps. This is because the limit can only be set in increments, so the control center will use the closest valid setting that is less than or equal to the value you entered. Once you've set the current limit, click Apply Settings and click the green Resume button to energize the stepper motor. If everything is working, the current you have selected will start flowing through the coils and the message at the bottom of the control center should say Driving. Remember, even though the motor is not moving, there can be quite a bit of current flowing, so the tick and the motor can become very hot. Now, go to the Status tab and use the Set Target interface at the bottom of that tab to command your motor to go to different target positions. If the Set Target checkbox is checked, you can move the stepper motor by dragging the scroll bar. Increase the values on either end of the range to have the motor take more steps in either direction. If you want your stepper motor to take smaller steps, go back to the Input and Motor Settings tab and change the step mode to a lower value. You might also want to set the decay mode for your tick, which dictates how fast the current through your motor coils decays during each step and matters most when microstepping is used. Generally, using slow decay generates less electrical and audible noise, but it can result in missed microsteps. Fast decay is much noisier, both electrically and audibly but it creates more evenly sized microsteps. You can also select Mixed Decay, which automatically decides between when to use slow or fast decay and should work well for typical applications. See section 4.3 of the User's Guide for more details about selecting a decay mode. After you have set the motor's step mode, current limit, and decay mode, you should set its maximum speed and maximum acceleration. The tick represents speeds, velocities, and speed limits in units of pulses or microsteps per 10,000 seconds. The tick can send up to 50,000 pulses per second, so the maximum allowed speed setting is 500 million. However, depending on your motor and its configuration, your motor might not be able to move that fast. To demonstrate what might happen if your motor can't keep up, we'll switch back to full step mode with a mixed decay. Then, to find the motor's max speed, We'll use the Control Center's Set Velocity option to play around with the max acceleration and speed settings to find out what this motor is capable of. To do this, first we want to make sure that the Control Center doesn't limit what we can set our speed to during our test, so set the tick's max speed to 50,000 pulses per second. It's also helpful to increase the max acceleration. This setting dictates how quickly your motor will achieve its set speed. On the default of 400 pulses per second squared, it can take quite a bit of time to achieve higher speeds. Add a couple zeros to the setting so you don't have to wait around forever for the motor to get up to its set speed. Note that if you find your stepper motor is losing steps during the speed tests, this could be a sign that your acceleration setting is too high and you should consider lowering it. Next, on the Status tab, make sure you're in Set Velocity mode. Enter plus and minus 500 million in the boxes at the end of the scroll bar so that the scroll bar range is set to be plus and minus 50,000 pulses per second. Then, in the Set Target Velocity box under the scroll bar, enter a relatively small number for the target velocity. We'll start at 1,000 pulses per second. 
Since our stepper motor has 200 steps per revolution, this means our motor's output shaft will rotate 5 times a second. Keep stepping up the target velocity until you reach a point where your motor stops or starts behaving erratically. Once the motor does get stuck, or stops behaving normally, it's usually best to reset the speed to zero. Then, if you want a more precise idea of where the speed limit needs to be set, reset your motor speed back up to the last speed it was running at, and take smaller steps as you increase the speed to dial in what the max speed should be. It seems like 16,000 pulses per second is a good max speed for this motor in its current configuration. Keep in mind that your motor's max speed is highly dependent on configuration settings like step mode, decay mode, current limit, and max acceleration. It's also dependent on external factors like input voltage and load. If you aren't achieving the performance from your motor that you would like, consider playing around with these variables to see what's possible. That covers the basics for using Pololu's TIC stepper motor controller. This video provided an overview of some of the topics covered in the TIC stepper motor controller's user's guide. If you got stuck on any step of this video, please refer to the TIC's user's guide for troubleshooting advice. Refer to the rest of the user's guide for more in-depth information about the TIC, including instructions for setting up one of the many control interfaces available on the TIC. If you get stuck anywhere along the way, refer to our support page for our general troubleshooting advice and information on contacting our technical support team. This page also gives a general overview of what information you should provide when contacting us so that we can provide better support faster and get you up and running with your project. Finally, we always like to hear what customers make with our products. Post your project to the Share Your Project section of our forum or share it with us on Twitter or on our Facebook page.